Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Karen, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some different ways you can use vertical monthly layouts. So vertical monthly logs are pretty much a staple in the bullet journaling system. They're the one that you can find in Ryder Carroll's original bullet journal video, which goes through what a bullet journal is and how you can use it. Beyond just writing a list of numbers down the side of a page that correspond to the days of the month, there are heaps of additional things you can do to a vertical monthly log to really make it your own. The first of this could be how you actually do your numbers. So you can see here on the left I have these numbers written across one box, whereas the ones next to them have been split out across two for each of the digits. Some people often also choose to include the day of the week, and this can be done either with single letters or multiple if you're that way inclined. Oftentimes people also like to have a way to distinguish the weekend days, so that could be done using a highlight colour or possibly writing in a different pen colour. Or if you wanted to section out the weeks completely, you could use different styles of dividers to break up each of those weeks. To make a monthly log easier to read, sometimes people also use a light, possibly a pastel colour, to highlight each second row. To personalise your layout even more, you might like to add sections or groups for each of your events so that they don't all just get in a jumbled mess together. There's always the possibility to add different decorations, doodles, colours, and anything else that really makes it your own. For events that occur commonly or possibly even on the same day every month, you might want to use signifiers or icons to represent these. And people sometimes also like to incorporate habit trackers and other types of trackers into their monthly log as well. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you five different styles of vertical monthly layout that you could use in your journal and suggest some ways that you could tweak this to make it more personalized. For today's video, I'm using the colors that I selected as part of the Oriental Spa color palette as part of my bullet journal color palettes video. Those colors were the 679 purple shade, the 912, which is a pinkish orange color, the 192, which is this nice green, the 990, which is a cream color, and then this red shade, which is 847. Along with that, I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens and also some washi tape. Just a reminder that any of the equipment I do use in today's setup will be linked in the description box below. So for the first monthly layout, I'm starting off by writing the title for the page using one of my favourite fonts. The nice part about this font is that it allows for so much variation in that larger chunk section. This can be filled in using different colours or patterns, anything that really strikes your fancy. In this layout, I'm using two columns to write down the numbers for each day of the month, putting one digit in each box. To indicate the end of each week, I'm using my Tombow Dual Brush Marker to do a dotted divider. I'm then also using some Tombow Markers to colour in the text and divider for the heading using a gradient effect. For each of the layouts I show in this video, I'm going to be filling it out with my events list for October, just so you can see what these ones would look like if they were all filled in. As I usually do in this layout, I'm using circles to represent each of the events, and typically I go in and colour code these depending on what type of event they were. The nice part about this layout is that it's super simple to set up. For our next layout, I'm doing something similar, but slightly different. Instead of putting the numbers for each day of the week on the edge of the page, I'm instead putting them in the middle so as to divide the page in half. I'm writing the title of the page out in photography and I'm making sure to keep that thickened down stroke open so I can go and add some colour. Instead of having the numbers across two boxes for this one, I'm instead putting the numbers in one column and putting the initial for each day of the week in the other. As my page is divided in half, this allows me to section off my events into personal and work related. So that the weekend days really jump out at me, I'm going and using that green Tombow marker to colour in each of the weekend days for the month. To add some more visual interest, I'm then going in again with my Tombow jaw brush markers to add a gradient to each of the dividers and also colour in the text for the title. Of course, if gradients weren't really your thing, you could always colour these in with just a solid block colour 
or use a pattern, or even use washi tape. With everything coloured in, it's now time to add in my events. As half of October actually is the school holidays, I've used an arrow running from the 1st to the 14th to signify this. For this one, I've of course only used two different categories. But for some people, I know that more categories would be necessary. As this layout is only on one page, if you wanted more categories but didn't want to compromise on space, you could make this one a double page spread. Some of the categories you might want to use could be personal, work, school, anything related to extracurriculars you might do, or if you had other family members' schedules that you needed to know about, those could go in here too. For this next one, I've already gone and sectioned off the top and the bottom of the page using some washi tape. To write down the numbers of the page, I'm going in with a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the red colour. However, I'm skipping all of the weekend days so that I can write these in in black. I'm also using the opposite colours to write down the letters for each day of the week. Although in the previous layouts we've had the title running along the top of the page, for this one I'm writing it down the side. Having your title in this place would be suited to someone who doesn't have a lot of days with multiple events, as it limits the space you have in each row for each day of the month. To make these rows really obvious, I'm then going in with that lighter coloured Tombow to highlight each second row. This layout and the last are another two that are really quick and simple to make, both taking a similar amount of time to the first one. Because of the limited horizontal space in this one, for any events that occur commonly, I'm using the initials of the event rather than writing those event titles out in full. So for instance, instead of writing out staff meeting, I'm using SM. Of course, another way to do this would be using icons rather than their initials. Moving away from the single page monthlies, this layout is a little bit different. For this one, I've used a double page monthly cover rather than putting in a title. I'm going in and writing down the initials for the month and also the year in a large block style font. As you'll see from the washi tape on this one, I've gone and cut seven columns worth of space from the edge of the right hand page. As part of this, I made sure to leave a tab, which is two columns by eight rows. To make the edge of the page and the little tab a little bit more secure, I went and added some washi tape to that side of the page. I'm also adding some more washi tape to the top and the bottom of my cover page. I'm again using my Tombow dual brush markers to add some color to this one. Here I'm just using block colours, but of course you could do this differently by using a pattern, or a gradient, or anything else that takes your fancy. With the cover page done, it's time to get started on laying out the monthly spread. For this one I'm writing the numbers for the month along the right so that they'll still be visible even when the cover page is closed. To start off with I'm going in with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the F size to rule out each of the sections I want on this page. To support my hand as I write down the numbers for each day of the month, I'm just using my scribbles that matter to prop my hand up. This is a really good tip for writing in the right hand side of your journal, as it can be really awkward to try and hold your hand in a hovering position above your journal. On the left hand side of this layout, I've given myself space for a habits and a steps tracker. Having these trackers right next to your monthly log can be a really good way to see any trends or patterns in your habit completion based on the number and types of events that you have going on. To save on space, I've used icons to represent each of the habits in this hypothetical monthly spread. For the boxes on the right hand side of this page, I'm using these to indicate any days that I have a social event going on. Of course, that's just how I'm using it. There are multiple different ways you could use this one. For instance, if you have shared custody of your kids and you wanted an easy way to visualize when you'll actually have them, this is one way you could do that. Or if you really wanna focus on one type of event, so for me that's social events, but that could be possibly times that you have sports events or sports practice, or days that you've scheduled to do something in particular. Or even if you had one habit in particular that you were really trying to focus on, you could section this away from your regular habits tracker to make sure it was more of a priority. 
To fill in the habits and steps trackers on this one, I'm using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the red colour. Any day that the habit was completed, I'm using a small dot, and I'm using my steps tracker as kind of like a vertical line graph. I'm then again going in and filling out my events list using my Pit Artist Pen in the S size. For our last layout, I'm also doing a double page spread. To start off with, I'm going in and doing some thin block letters for the title, and then doodling in some stars to give myself a running header across both pages. I'm also including a box at the bottom of the right hand page, which will be later turned into a key. To write out the numbers for each day of the month, I'm using my Tombow dual brush markers in an alternating set of colours. Each digit is two rows tall. This gives me two full rows for each day of the month, and is particularly good for anybody who has quite a lot of events that they need to record. With this much space, there's also enough room to include some tasks that you might need to do on specific days. Of course, any remaining space you have at the end of each day could be used for small doodles or possibly some journaling. With all of the colouring done, I'm then going in and filling in my key. Although not strictly necessary for a type of spread like this where you do have so much space to write down your events, the key can be a really good way to signify events that you have that commonly occur that you don't want to write out in full each time. To make it so that each of my signifiers really stand out, I'm going in with that Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the red colour, so it's really easily differentiated from my regular black pen. So for a final flip through, we have my first layout, the second two single page layouts, the layout that includes both a cover page and some trackers, and then the one where each day of the month got two rows. That's all I've got for you today, thank you for watching. If you had any thoughts, comments or feels, please do leave them in the comments section below. And if you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. And until next time, bye!